They mostly take the mound when the game is on the line. When they're on the short end of things, it never looks good. There is usually no wiggle room, and usually the final result is in their hands. A Phillies relief corps that has struggled all season has taken the mound with a newfound confidence. They've emphatically closed out three straight wins while making it a lot more fun to open that door. so good it's been a four and two homestand thus far for the Phils this afternoon they go for the series sweep against the Washington Nationals it's game three of a three game series here at Citizens Bank Park and things have been brighter for the Phils take a look at the last eight series including this one it all began down in Washington when today's starter Cliff Lee appeared in that series the Phillies have only lost one series since that one it was that series against the Atlanta Braves Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy, hello with Chris Wheeler. This afternoon, the Phillies go for a three-game series sweep, and for the first time, they look for a series sweep against a team with a better than 500 record. And they're hopeful, hopefully going to have to rely not only on Cliff Lee, but also on that bullpen, which has been so much better. Bullpen's been really, really good, Tom, especially the last couple nights. A lot of strikeout coming out of the bullpen. How about on Friday night when Charlie Manuel turned into Tony La Russa and he used one pitcher for a hitter. There are a couple guys that maybe phase two, but for the most part, it was one guy. And look at all the strikeouts in this. And they were able to get the job done to get to Jonathan Papelbon. Struck out Chad Tracy down. Now, last night, they got to the same spot they were the night before. He gets Harper out, but decides to stay with Bastardo. Why? Charlie said, I just had a feeling the guy was going to get the job done and get me to Papelbon. He did. Jonathan Papelbon came in, got a couple more strikeouts. And you see all these swings and misses late in games, and that's such a good thing because nothing can happen when your bullpen comes in and does right what you see there. Nine and a third innings and 14 strikeouts. Nothing like punch outs at the end of a ball game, and the bullpen's been doing a great job. All right, we'll see if they have to pick up for Cliff Lee today. The last time Lee faced the Washington Nationals, he wheels probably had one of his best outings of the year. Yeah, he was really looking for a win at that time, going up against Strasburg, too, that night, and pitched a tremendous game. He had good stuff early in the game. The Phillies would eventually blow it wide open, but he kept it close when he had to, had all his pitches working, and it was a Cliff Lee game where he had a lot of fun in the ball game, too. You see the ground balls that he's throwing. Everything was going really well, but this is what he likes to do, get involved. Got himself a base hit and an RBI, and just for good measure, takes off and steals a base. When Cliff Lee has fun playing like that, it seems like the game goes a lot better for him. All right, let's hope he has some fun this afternoon as the Phillies go for this series sweep against the first place Washington Nationals here at Citizens Bank Park. It will be Lee and he'll be opposed by a pretty good pitcher in right hander Jordan Zimmerman who's making his 26th start of the year and looking for his 10th win of the season. Well, Chase Utley certainly has uh, turned up the engine a little bit during this series. He's played hard the entire year. He never slows down. He certainly has it in this series. Some defense, a key stolen base last night. We'll get to the lineups at first pitch when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Bud Light Live. Summer is calling. By Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota Care. By Citizens Bank. We're for homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you. By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross. We're creating a more coordinated health care system that is built around you. Independence Blue Cross, changing the game.
game series against the Washington Nationals. The Phillies have won the first two. And the starting nine made their way out toward their favorite position. And some of them got a chance to say hello to their favorite Philly. Great honor on Sundays. Nine randomly selected children coming to the ballpark today. Not only did they get the Jimmy Rollins uh, backpack cooler, compliments of ShopRite, but nine others also got the chance to go out and spend some time on the playing field with some of their favorite Phillies players. So a good day to be a kid here at the yard. Let's take a look at the national starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at shortstop, Danny Espinosa. Bryce Harper, the center fielder, bats second. Ryan Zimmerman hits third, followed by Jason Worth, the right fielder. Adam LaRoche, the first baseman, bats fifth. Hitting sixth is Tyler Moore, the left fielder. Jesus Flores, the catcher, bats seventh. Steve Lombardozzi, the second baseman, hits eighth. And batting ninth and pitching is right-hander Jordan Zimmerman. They'll face Philly's left-hander. Cliff Lee. Lee is looking for uh, his third victory of the year. Every time I see that, I, I kind of get caught thinking it's going to say 12 or 13. It says two. Just yeah. two. And it's the end of August, which makes it even crazier. See only 25 walks there, though, Tommy. He's only walked one in his last 35 and a third innings. He does throw a lot of strikes and sometimes probably too many strikes because he gets hit a little bit, especially with home run balls. He pounds that strike zone. His career against Washington, good numbers, especially the last time out. Phillies have not scored a whole lot of runs for him, just 57 while he's in the ball game. But he is so overdue to win a game in this ballpark. Why not today? And dominate a game. He's overdue to even dominate a game. That sounds strange. Some pitchers just would prefer to just win, but he's during the last few years, he's got out and flat out dominated some games, some months, and he's looking to give the Phils a series sweep. Well, time now for the Nissan Keys to this afternoon's game. We started bright sunshine here on a nice Sunday afternoon at Citizens Bank Park. Well, we just said that. Let's have Cliff Lee win a game here, and if Tom says, go ahead, feel free, dominate, and sweep a good team because make no mistake about it. These Washington Nationals are a good team. Yeah, Phillies have swept one three-game series this year. It was against Milwaukee in July, and they've swept two two-game series. Danny Espinosa has very good numbers against Lee stands in. The first pitch of the day is over for a strike. So we're underway under bright, sunshiny skies. Decided to lead Espinosa off today because his numbers on base hits, those kind of things, are better against a left-hander as he's a switch hitter. He has more power left-handed. It's also 7 for 13 against Lee. Foul tip 0-2. Yeah, and then so Davey Johnson decided, well, I'm not going to bury this guy in the 8-hole today. David Johnson's watched his team strike out 19 times so far of this series. Owen to the count to Espinosa. Breaking ball swung on it, missed. That's a heck of a curve to start the afternoon. First strikeout for Lee. And with one out, Bryce Harper's coming up. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good night with three pitches and that curveball. He saves that a lot of times. As the game goes along for a strikeout pitch in this case he comes right out against a guy who's worn him out and strikes him out with him. So Bryce Harper is hitting 250 this year with 12 home runs. He's three for eight in this series. Davey Johnson said yesterday that he was thinking about giving him some more time off against left handed pitching. But out of necessity Davey Johnson needs to use him this afternoon because Mike Morse is still nursing a sore hand. Ian Desmond is nursing a sore hamstring. So they essentially are down to one extra outfielder in Roger Bernardino. That ball is shot to the opposite way. Good play by Rollins and nice hold by Howard. Yeah, real good backhand play there by Jimmy. He could still get a lot on his throws. And as Tom said, holding the bag real well here is Ryan Howard. This throws a little bit high, but you see it's starting to sail a little bit. And Ryan uses all six foot four and that big frame of his to stay on the bag. Two outs, five pitches, all strikes. And here's Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman's hitting 281 with 16 home runs. He's 0 for 7 in this series. In fact, the Phillies pitchers have really handled the middle of the lineup for the Nationals so far. It was Roy Halliday who did the handling last night. And he was Kyle Kendrick did it the night before. He was really good last night. It was Roy Halliday. Inside one ball and one strike to Zimmerman.
Zimmerman against the Phillies this year is three for 18. First time the Phillies saw the Nationals, he was out with an injury. And now he has the count in his favor two balls and one strike. There's a strike and it's two and two. 85 on the changeup. Using all his pitches early cutter, fastball, changeup. Of course, that one real good curveball to strike out Lombardozzi to begin the game. Now the 2 2 pitch. Oh. <laughs> well, he is around the plate, but he's out of the middle of it here early in the game. And that's a good sign for Lee. Lance Barksdale is the home plate umpire. Crew chief Jerry Davis is over at first base today. Three and two, the count to Zimmerman. Line drive, base hit to center field. So that's Zimmerman's first hit of the series. Well, it's a good day to sit outside and enjoy some Turkey Hill ice cream here at the ballpark. And during the 2012 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory. And five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Two outs. Jason Worth is the hitter. Jason overall 306 in 48 games missed a large portion of the season because of the broken wrist. Take strike one. It's 0 and 1. Worth is another one of those guys that almost always takes the first pitch. His reputation with the Phillies was that he would take nearly five pitches per AB. And he has the same reputation with the Nationals. That hasn't changed. Yeah, well, that's the reason he's leading off for them. But they, they had to drop him down in this series. He was leading off in the Friday game. Then they had to drop him down because of the injury to Desmond. Again, Cliff is ahead. No balls and two strikes. He always has been right up the top of the league and pitches seen in the course of a season. 0 2 pitch. Popped him up. Right side. Chase Utley, sunglasses on. Calling everybody off. He's under it. And an easy first inning for Cliff Lee. He winds up throwing 14 pitches. No runs, one hit, one man left. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Nationals nothing and the Phillies coming up. Ready for the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at shortstop Jimmy Rollins. Batting second, the left fielder Juan Pierre. Chase Utley hits third, followed by Ryan Howard, the first baseman. John Mayberry is in the five hole. Lance Snicks bats sixth. Kevin Franzen will hit seventh over third base. Eric Kratz bats eighth. At batting night, the pitching course is Lee. And they'll face right under Jordan Zimmerman. The 26 year old has had a decent year. His numbers are better than his win loss record. He's 9 and 7 with an ERA of 2.54. Oh, this guy's really good pitcher. Numbers there, when you look at other than the one loss record, very good. Walk, strikeouts, 
Uh, opposition batting average outstanding fastball and he'll throw curve slider change. He's more fastball slider pitcher. Good numbers on the road here in this ballpark. He's one in one lifetime in two starts with a six ERA. Now the start should be Rollins off with a strike on the inside corner. Rollins is hitting three straight. Three for six in the series with a couple of walks. And a couple of RBIs. We well, think about Strasburg when you talk about Washington with their pitching, but you don't do what they've been able to do this year with one guy. And when you factor in Zimmerman and then the guy we saw last night, Gio Gonzalez, and throw Detweiler in there the year Jackson's had, that's why they are right where they are because their pitching's been so good. National League leaders, he's second behind Johnny Cueto. Just barely. That's off Rollins' foot. That was the slider that we talked about about being his second best pitch. And Rollins will walk it off. Doesn't have one of those for a while. And Jimmy will do that sometimes in the course of a season and. He's missed time over the years on account of it. Hopefully he can walk it off. It's taking a while. Ooh, that hit his knee didn't it? Good his back knee. I used to do that. Gary Maddox used to hit his front knee. He would spread out so much and he would hit it off that front knee somehow. One and two the count to Rollins. He fouls it back toward the Hall of Fame club. The lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Ed Beatty of Philadelphia. If the Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, Big Ed will win $100. Wanted to the count to Rollins. And a slider swung out and missed. First strike out of the day for Zimmerman. And that'll bring Juan Pierre to the plate. See Zimmerman come here with a little bit of a bigger breaking ball there. And he has all the pitches. He won't use curveball and change up as much as fastball slider, but the but he has them. And the hitters know that. Juan Pierre is 0 for his last 15 take strike one. Zimmerman's a guy they shut down last year. There wasn't that much talk about it. Because it wasn't quite the same situation. The Nats weren't going anywhere, and his name isn't Strasburg. No, the Nat Nationals at the time he was shut down, they were probably 19 games back, weren't they? It was a day you guys were driving out to Cincinnati, and I went and saw that game, and it was against the Reds. And that was the last game he pitched that Sunday afternoon. And then Strasburg came back mm -hmm. and he kind of picked up his innings. Well, he has two quick outs. There's Mike Rizzo, the general manager of the Washington Nationals. Yes, he's going to turn it around a little bit today. Mike, Mike's going to come up here and sit, not down in the seats where he was the last couple of days. Well, I'll tell you what, down in those seats on a sunshiny afternoon, pretty hot. Yep, that dome of his will get fried just plus, like mine does. Plus, uh, not that baseball people are superstitious or anything. <laughs> nice, comfortable booth. Why not? That would never happen. He'd be superstitious. Chase Utley, two for six of the series so far. Seven for 24 on the homestand. Philly so far in the first six games are four and two on the homestand. Mike's done a real good job with that team. The whole front office has. Uh, in rebuilding uh, this franchise, and they are really good. They just found out, according to the Washington Post, that their their number one pick this year, Lucas uh, Giolito, will undergo Tommy John surgery at the end of this month. So you know Zimmerman's been through it, Strasburg's been through it, and now their number one pick from this year. Two and one the count to Utley as he takes a fastball for strike one. Well, they can only hope that Zimmerman and Stras or that that kid comes back the way Zimmerman and Strasburg. Phillies a jump from these guys the first two games with a with, with run. Two last night a run in the first game on Friday. And then because of Chase Utley's base running and other things that he's contributed, they've scored an extra run that they needed in the eighth inning of both games. Pretty entertaining, too, the way they did it. But eerily similar, these two games.
Looks that foul off the first baseline. And Lady's very pleased that Sam Prolazo just gave her a baseball. Said he had to look back because she was cheering so hot. Sam's, so Sam's one of those really good guys. I'm sure that made his day. Breaking hmm. ball outside three and two. He used to throw a lot more of those. When he first came up, I think you could say he was a fastball <laughs> curveball guy. That is an outstanding curveball he just missed with. Comes back with a slider and it remains three and two. At least put together a heck of an at bat here. What looked like an easy first pitch count wise has now resulted in 16 pitches and one more coming for Zimmerman. With 196 lifetime home runs, he's on the doorstep of 200 for his career. And Ryan Howard, who's on deck, is on the doorstep of 300 home runs. Outside ball four, nothing works out of one. He always plays the game right, but he's really playing it right recently. He he could tell Chase is back in the flow, physically feeling good. He's not worried about his legs right now, and now he's playing his game. He plays his game, boys. It's fun to watch. He's the guy that you use as, a, as an example for every other young player around the world of baseball. Play it like him. Ryan Howard's two for eight this series so far in the homestand. He's six for 22 with a home run. Lays off a changeup, it looked like, and it's 0 and 1. Now they call that a slider. They have three infielders on the right side, including Lombard Dozy, the second baseman. Base dealers eight out of nine off Zimmerman. Flores, five for 51. As far as it caught stealing in attempts. To the count. Yeah, that was a, a big topic for David Johnson the last couple of days is the ability of his pitchers to hold base runners on. Last night it came back and haunted them when Burnett was out on the mound and Utley stole second, then stole third. Well, they got them that extra run when John Mayberry hit the sack fly. Count is 0 at 2. Breaking ball swung out and missed. That'll be the curve from Jordan Zimmerman. And the Phillies are retired here in the first inning. No runs, no hits, one man left. We go to the second here in Philadelphia in a scoreless game.
Live.tv Premium for only $10. Watch every out-of-market game live online on your favorite devices. Offer ends August 27th. Visit MLB.tv or text MLB.tv to 31826 to start watching now. Blackout restrictions and message and data rates may apply. Today is the 10th, 10th anniversary of MLB.tv, Wheels. All right. I think our world has kind of, kind of changed a little bit just because of all the games we watch on the computer now. Yeah. Adam LaRoche takes the first pitch, so it's 0-1. Now it's 0-2. On the hands over the head of Rollins, it'll drop for a hit for the Roach. It's his first hit of the series, and he's aboard to start the second. I think he snapped his bat right in half. Well, with the rudder on, Tyler Moore's coming up. Let's check in with Murph. Murph, what do you have, buddy? All right, T Mac, well, you and Wheels talking earlier in the game. It's just really strange to look down and see uh, Cliff Lee with just two wins at this part of the season. When you take a look at the numbers after 22 starts and compare them to last year, it becomes even stranger. You look right down, obviously the records are different, but ERA, just like a half a run difference for nine innings. Balls or walks and strikeouts about the same. The big one right there, home runs. 22 home runs this year as opposed to just 14 at this juncture of the season last year. If there's one thing you can point to to why Cliff Lee maybe doesn't have quite as many wins as he had last year, it's probably that number. But all in all, it's been a strange season for him, and the numbers support it because if you look at the comparison, not too much different than last year at this time when he had 10 wins. Yeah, nearly a year between victories here at this ballpark. It's so surprising. Lance Nix will take care of Tyler Moore. Well, the other thing, too, Murph, if you look at his numbers, He's always been a, a good pitcher against 500 or better teams. I think sometimes you gauge the success of a starting pitcher on their record against teams who are better than 500. And he's over. He's 11 games over 500 in his career against teams that are better than 500. Yeah, it really it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And we've been looking at the numbers all year, and we've been watching him pitch. And there are games that that he simply was not in them. But there have been other games where you think, wow, he certainly pitched well enough to win this one. And there's been more than a handful of them this season that he just hasn't gotten. To uh, to go his way this year. Well, one game he did get to go his way was his last outing against the Nationals. Let's hope that's an omen for today as he starts Flores with a strike. Flores has not played in this series so far. Go back game after game this year with Cliff Lee. He go right back to the game where he hurt himself in San Francisco. I don't know. What was that? To go nothing, nothing in that game and pitch into extra innings. And it's one after another when you start to analyze, we go, you got to be kidding me. That this many things could happen. And as Murph pointed out, he has had games he's given away this year also, but they also don't score much for him. Ground ball left side. Nice play by Franz and tossed to Utley, who got to the bag right with the throw. And it's a 5 4 3 athletic double play. That's a good job all the way around. Lee broke the bat. Franz and stayed composed. And Utley found the bag at second. So Lee is through two. He's allowed a couple of hits. And he got a little defense behind him to help him through the top of the second. We go to the bottom of the second here in Philadelphia.
up for the Phils. And speaking of Mayberry, here's our Coors Light cold hard blast. John had a good game again last night. Broke the 2 2 tie. See Gio Gonzalez's reaction. He knew that was out of the ballpark. That made it 3 to 2. And just for good measure, hit the sack fly his next time up to give him an extra run. Cold hard blast brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Mayberry with 12 home runs, 35 runs batted in. This has probably been his best home stand of the year. He's 8 for 22. 364 with a couple home runs. It'll be Mayberry, Knicks, and Kevin Franzen here in the second. And he keeps on hitting. We've seen him start to swing at the first pitch in RBI situations. And there he swung at the first pitch. May have cracked his bat. Yeah, he fought that off. That was. Kind of like LaRoche, the hit he got, like the one Zimmerman got. Both these guys have real good stuff here this afternoon. They have a lot of action on their pitches. This thing is running, and he hits it off the end of the bat a little bit. But good job. When you're that strong, you can hit those kind of balls, and they'll clear the infield. So Mayberry is aboard. Lance Nix is the hitter. Good guy to pull the ball in the hole right now. Maybe get a first and third out of it. Played the last couple seasons with the Nationals. Oh, his uh, his uh, his slide at home the other night was one of the big plays in the first game of the series. Get around Charlie. He brings up certain subjects. One of them that comes back to a lot is he wants to play next more. He thinks he can help this team this year and next year if they can get him some at bats because he's versatile enough to play some positions for him. Figure you play all three outfield positions mm -hmm. and first base. Move around a little bit too for a big guy. Breaking ball 0 and 2 the count to Knicks. He's hurt so much this year, you know, really didn't get that much of a look at him. And he's a fastball hitter, there's no doubt about it. He, he's like a lot of guys, struggles with off speed stuff. But you can get ahead in the count a little bit, get enough fastballs, he can hit that thing. And he's got some power. First, Mayberry back ahead of the tag. Talking to Nick's the other night about that play at the plate where he just got his hand in. He said, I think my hand was there ahead of the tag. He said it was so close. I said, We well, had all the guys behind you trying to tell you where to go. He goes, He said, Everybody was back there trying to tell me where to slide. I said, Did you see Franz? And he said, oh, I saw him. Hmm. Made a heck of a slide. Down the left field line. And on the run is Moore. And he puts it away. And back to first goes Mayberry. Phillies will have an off day tomorrow and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, three game series against the New York Mets. Thursday at 105 is a Citizens Bank Business Person Special. After the game, it's a Model Sporting Goods. Kids run the bases. Good seats are still available for all three games between the Phillies and the Mets. Mets are in fourth place, the Phillies in third in the National League East. Here are the matchups Worley Hamels and Kendrick for the Phillies young Harvey and Nice for the Mets. Kevin Franzen one for six in this series but six for 14 on the homestand. Playing third again today Placido Polanco is available. Franzen likes to hit the ball the other way when there's a man on first base and they start him in to try and make it a little bit tougher to do that. He gets something away. He will look for that hole over here on the right side and try and make something happen. Pulls it toward the hole on the left side. Diving stops Zimmerman. They get one at second. That's all they'll get. That's a good play. That ball was on him pretty quickly. Oh, he's good. He's one of those big third basemen, like say Scott Rowland. You know, they're not. They don't run real fast, but they're so quick. Look at that move. He's so quick. And of course he's tall enough that when he leans like that he can really cover some ground and then gets up and gets the out no double play there. But it's just a tremendous play by a very very good defensive third base. You don't teach what guys like him can do and that's that quickness. I just don't know how he makes those throws. I, I, he does not throw like a third baseman. Well he's. And I know a lot of that is because he 
There's a combination. Just, yeah, <laughs> he just can't throw overhand anymore for some reason. It's in his head. He has. Uh, he's thrown overhand. He's trying to throw overhand on the regular throws. That one he'll flip them. But it's a, they say it's a combination of he has a sh shoulder problem and he's got a little bit of the yips. Eric Kratz takes it side two and zero. Oh. Kratz had a base hit to right field last night. The play he really has trouble making to say is down the line to his right when he has to make a long throw and come over the top because he doesn't get a lot on it. And it's tougher for him to quick release the way that he tries to do. I haven't seen much of it in this series come to think of it. You haven't had to see him make throws where he has to come over the top. Lance Barksdale, the home field home plate umpire, is getting uh, an earful from Steve McCaddy, the pitching coach for the Nationals. 3-0 the count to Kratz. Got the green light. So Cliff Lee will wind up leading off the third. No runs, one hit, and one man left here in the second. We've completed two here at Citizens Bank Park. We'll be back for the third. To phillies.com go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line all right wheels if you've done sneezing name the college that bryce harper played at when the nationals selected him number one overall in the 2010 drafts that is a tough yeah one. I, i'm not going to get that that's not a layup no i've read that a few times that's a three-point half-court bank shot yeah, i've read that a few times and it just it's not like saying oklahoma no, it's not. I'll give you that. It's. Yeah, I'm sure it's a fine institution, but it's not one that jumps out at you. Not in this neck of the woods, anyway. Steve Lombardozzi leads off the third. Lombardozzi batting eighth today. He's batted lead off the last two days. We could go for 30 innings, and I wouldn't get that today. <laughs> Unless somebody texted you the answer. Right, and then I won't use it. I, I don't know. We could go right to the answer right now. But I'm sure the fans have it by now. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. Oh, and to the count to Lombardozzi. 283 hitter with two home runs, 23 runs batted in. He's down looking. Mm -hmm. Second strikeout for Cliff Lee. That's good. He got a little bit of a high strike there. That's what Lombardozzi's thinking. Well, the definition of the strike zone, that's a strike. Hitters nowadays, they don't think that's a strike. Oh, one out Jordan Zimmerman's coming up Budweiser through the walk off the hero program will donate five thousand dollars to folds of honor for every Phillies walk off win. Please join Budweiser and the Phillies in honoring those who keep our nation safe and free. One ball no strikes the count to Jordan Zimmerman. Three of his eight career RBIs came this year. Hey, 
has two lifetime doubles. They're both this year. And a home run, too. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, they're underway in Cincinnati, where Matt Holliday has given the Cardinals a 3 0 lead. He has two RBIs so far today. Big series for the Cardinals, and they've only been able to split to this point. Homer Bailey against Adam Wainwright this afternoon in that ballgame. A new trap for a baseball. Huh? The authenticator will mark that ball up. Talked about that last night. I met Angel on the way home last night. He was in the car next to me, and I stopped and said, "You know, you were on TV tonight." He goes, "I heard." I said, "We didn't give your name because uh, we didn't know your name." He said, "I'm Angel." I don't know his name though. Wheels. No. Well, maybe you'll ride next to him tonight. Yeah. Two-two pitch. Broke his bat. Fly ball to shallow right. Nick's on the run. Makes the catch. He jump Nick's got on that. Yeah. That was really good. He's playing fairly shallow anyway. Because of. The fact that. It's a pitcher and you're playing on his offside. But he got after that pretty well and he can run once he gets going too. that's one thing you really notice about him in the outfield. That he covers ground. Trying to paint him out, it would be a Rawlings gold glove outfield or anything, but he is more than adequate out there. Which, if he's not going to be an everyday outfielder, he needs to be right. uh, good on a couple of couple parts of the game to get, to get out there from time you to time. Need those kind of guys, and the number one part of his game is going to be to hit right-handed pitching. Danny Espinosa struck out his first time up. He lays off the first pitch here. It's one to zero. I just think he's a guy. That fits into the puzzle for next year. I don't know what they think. And that's what matters. Well, the Phillies do have him signed for a second season. One ball, one strike to count as Espinosa fouls it off. Here's the one two pitch on the right field line that'll be out of play it remains one and two. Got him with the curveball the last time and he tried a curveball here. Two and two the count. Pitch in the dirt. Cliff has pitched in 22 games this year. He has a no decision in 13 of those 22 games. That's the most in the major leagues. 59% of his games, he doesn't have a decision. The 2 2 to Espinosa. Ground ball left side. I think they broke another bat. Franzen throws out Espinosa, or he just lose the bat. No, they broke another bat. Went in the dugout. The barrel wow. went into the Washington dugout. That is the fourth bat that Lee has broken today. There's the handle at home plate. We go to the bottom of the third.
believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. By Bud Light Lime, summer is calling. And by Nissan Summer Saving Days, event ends September 4th. Visit ChooseNissan.com. With Leo lead it off uh, in front of a near capacity crowd this afternoon. 44,000 on hand last night plus. And tonight looks like, today it looks like it's pretty thick too. Lee so far this year 191 with no homers and two RBIs. And he'll lead off against Zimmerman. Fouls the first pitch away. Lee has seen more off speed pitches this year than last year. That's what happens to pitchers that can hit. So he just saw a fastball there from Zimmerman. He said, I'm going after it. And he got another one. Not so much for seeing more off speed pitches. That was a jammer. Three strike. Yeah, three straight fastballs, including that last time. Clarksdale is more up in the zone than he is down today for both pitchers. Friday, September 7th, it's Cabrini College Night here at the ballpark. All fans 15 and over will receive the college knit hat. Compliments of Cabrini. Saturday the 8th is a 705 start. Sunday the 9th is a 135 start. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Rollins struck out his first time up. Oh. Oh, and to the count. Both these guys are just firing strikes. Two outstanding pitchers today. Another broken bat. That's the other thing they're doing. They're breaking bats. Well, if you want something fun and informative in the morning, then PHL 17 has you covered. For all your weather, traffic, and trends, check out Eye Opener from 6 until 8 tomorrow morning. It's a different kind of morning show right here on PHL 17. Oh, and two to Rollins with one out. Here in the third. Fly ball shallow right. Espinosa doesn't see it. Here comes Worth. Or I should say Lombardozzi didn't see it. Well, there's a lot of jammers going on out here on both sides. Both these guys have tremendous movement on their pitches. That's why you're seeing all these broken bats and weak outs. None of this game's gonna look big. Yeah, think move. And Jimmy Rollins doesn't barrel it up and winds up hitting the pop up. Had to pull his hands in at the last second. But he's getting his broken bats. He's ones where they're breaking in half on pitches away that he's getting right off the end. Ball two strikes to one Pierre. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be all kinds of dizzy now, Wheels. Yeah. That'll do it. Pierre takes upstairs two and two. That's a pitch he's calling a little bit. That was maybe too high. The hitters are probably becoming aware of the fact that high strikes could be called today. There's a high. Well, he's high in the stands. High on life as a fanatic. I think high on life is the right way to put it. I don't think that whole section, that entire section, has watched any of this half inning. Well, he could. What? <laughs> Let me get away from this thing. <laughs> I wasn't there when I left. It's good. Most kids are afraid of the fanatic that young. Three and two, the cow to Pierre. 
in one of the suites in a hurry. Let's see, a let's see how many suite. people we can get into a hug. <laughs> having a big day out oh, there. Yeah. Pierre's aboard with a two out walk. Good at bat by Juan Pierre. Second walk issued by Zimmerman. Nutley walked the first time and he's uh, coming up to the plate. Now, for Juan Pierre, he is one stolen base away from tying Maury Wills for 19th all time in baseball history. Good time to run. Trying to get into scoring position with two outs for a guy like Utley. He's so hot. Pierre has stolen 585 bases in his career. He leads the Phillies with 31 steals. Some name to use, huh? Maury Wills. Maury Wills. Oh, he was so good. He had a great number two hitter behind him named Jim Junior Gilliam. Switch hitter. Not afraid to hit with two strikes, but take pitches for Wills. Gilliam, Junior Gilliam played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, as Wheels mentioned before, you can run on Jordan Zimmerman. You read him right and get the right pitch to run on. Oh, he quick, that was a oh, that would have been the time to go. I think he quick pitched his catcher too. He did something that got Flores off balance. That's for sure. <laughs> that's embarrassing for the catcher. Look at this. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> oh, they'll get on him about that for a while. Everyone will say that's just sheer velocity. I knocked you over. What ball and those strikes? I thought maybe he got tied up with the home plate umpire. I've never seen too many catchers fall backwards like that. You know, sometimes a quarterback gets stepped on by a center. Right. I thought maybe the uh, umpire stepped on the back of his foot or something and he would fall into the ground. It, it was different looking. Like those blue shades he's wearing. Fly ball right center field. Jason Worth is under it. It's not that deep and he didn't see it right away and it popped out of his glove and he held on to it with his bare hands. I don't know what was going on. He just didn't see it at all. It kept on blowing toward shallow right center field. Sunglasses on. Right there he looks like he's in trouble. Oh he caught it with his bare head as we go to the fourth.
What at prices you'll love, like long lasting Duracell copper top batteries. From who? But WB Mason. Top of the fourth inning, scoreless game. Phillies and the Nationals. Bryce Harper will lead it off. He grounded out to short his first time up. It'll be Harper, Ryan Zimmerman, and Jason Worth. Two, three, and four. Quickly so far, 39 pitches through three innings. He has a couple strikeouts. And the first pitch at the knees for strike one to Harper. It's 0 1. Sarge, is this a pitcher's umpire with how high the strike zone is? I mean, he's calling pitches at the knees, too. Yeah, I'd have to really think so. And, you know, we've talked about that before. It's up to the the hitter, and not only just the hitter, the pitcher, to make that adjustment when an umpire is calling balls there that might be, well, not your conventional uh, uh, strike, but uh, they'll make the adjustment. Well, and Cliff has made the adjustment. Jordan Zimmerman has, too. I mean, both have been moving the ball around or at least pitching with a lot of movement, too. Yeah, well, they have been able to square up a lot of balls and consequently a lot of broken bats, uh, you know, as well. Brian Zimmerman waves through the first pitch a change up and it's no balls in one strike. That Cliff just picked up a piece of a bat and threw it off to the side. Because he's been breaking one after another this afternoon. Well, even though he doesn't have a lot of wins I mean he's still a, a guy that when you're facing you really have to pay attention to. Same as Zimmerman his record doesn't indicate how well he pitches or can pitch I should say. Now the 0-2 pitch to Ryan Zimmerman. See, that's that's pretty smart of Lee because he's been getting pitches called up there in the zone. Why not go up there and go a little higher? And that's what he did. That's Barksdale, the veteran umpire. Back to the box. Lee has it again. I don't know what he was doing. He had huh? tagged uh, Harper before, but he started running at Ryan Zimmerman there. Hey, he's going to tag him again. Zimmerman just started picking it up a little bit, so he decided to throw it over to Ryan Howard, the first baseman. Good pitch there as he hits it off the end of the bat. See how he's going to run over there? I guess he thought he was just going to stop and let him tag him. It's almost as if he was challenging him to run. Now, lefties think a little differently uh, on this level. Worth popped out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Curve ball in there for a strike. You notice how Worth coming in and the actually barehanded the ball. If you saw that, I didn't see it real speed. I didn't see it until we replayed the the slow mo. Yeah, I think he actually barehanded the ball. And uh, the good thing is, and we joke about it sometimes, that when you can't see the ball, you actually. Keep your mouth uh, actually closed, but take a look at it as he bare hands it. You got to have soft hands to be able to do that. I would think big hands too. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him inside. Third strikeout of the day for Cliff Lee, much to the delight of this crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. Cliff gets a couple of comebackers, then takes care of Jason Worth. He's got the ball moving every which way this afternoon. Now he's hoping for a little offense to give him the lead.
is brought to you by Ford. Ford is America's brand. Go further. Visit your Quality Plus Ford store today. By Citizens Bank. We're for homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you. And by Chevrolet. See your local Chevy dealer. Visit ChevyDealer.com. Sarge, uh, that's an awful lot of work to get yeah. that look going. Yeah, it is. Uh, I had one exactly like that. Not maybe as large. Peyton Bride, I'm sure a lot of the fans there. That's right, yeah. <laughs> He's bad, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I remember when Oscar Gamble used to slide at Hope Plate and his helmet would pop off and it would be, I mean, his hair would just poof. <laughs> Ryan Howard takes a strike. It's 0-1. Remember that uh, the, the Harlem Globetrotters cartoon where I forget which player it was where he used to take all the things out of his afro? Oh, boy. Big McBride oh. would be proud, huh? Oh, yes. Big McBride would definitely be proud of that one. Oscar Gamble. One yeah. ball and one strike to count to Ryan Howard. Fouls it off. It's one and two. The only bad thing about those particular hairdos, they were hard to wash. You could never get the soap all out of it. It continued to stay in there like one of those little, what do you call those bristle pads? Remember those? Brillo pads? Brillo pads, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it just, it just suds up, suds up. <laughs> oh, boy. Howard takes low. It's two balls and two strikes. Makes you want back for the old days, huh, Sarge? No, I'm I'm, I'm glad the, uh, the styles have changed and they keep changing. Howard serves it to left field. It's going to hang up there for for more. One well, gone here in the fourth. Well, not all that bad of a swing, and I say that because it appeared he was actually trying to go to. Left field. Usually he's just swinging a lot of times, and if he ends up hitting it, it'll go there. Take a look and see where the pitch is. Breaking ball. You see how he just almost one handed? Again, though, off balance. So even if he hits it, not going to have a lot of power behind it because, again, he had actually left that ball there, just hitting it off the end. He was uh, one of the strikes he was called on in his first at bat was that same kind of pitch that was called on the outside corner. I think with two strikes, he was kind of protect a little bit there. No, if he has better balance, though, I mean, he he would have really had good uh, contact, even though it was a pitcher's pitch. John Mayberry singled his first time up. Oh. Mayberry takes a 94 mile an hour fastball for a strike of the knees, one and one. You can tell maybe he was looking for something other than the fastball. Is it really got in on him a little bit too tight? To it to the count of fastball inside. Mayberry's now hitting four straight. He has nine hits on this homestead. He's nine for 23. You, know, you were talking to him the other day about just seeing different pitches a little differently. Seeing different pitches, staying off your heels there when they throw that uh, breaking ball. He has a tendency to do that. But you can tell he's been thinking about it and trying to do it because he's hitting some balls to right center. Not with a lot of authority the way that he wants, but he's starting to make a lot better contact. Ground ball to third. Nice play by Zerman. Quick hands. And he's able to make that throw, although it looked awkward. He gets the second out. Now this ball looked like it almost took a, a bad hop. Top spin. Look how he picks that ball. Makes it look very easy. Almost threw it away. Visit the ballpark up close and personal with, group, with uh, groups of 25 or more. Your tours include visits to the dugout, Diamond and Hall of Fame clubs, and much more.
They're available year round. For information or to schedule your group tour, see Ballpark Tours at Phillies.com. Little jump throw by the second baseman Lombardozzi. And Adam LaRoche is able to stay on the bag. One, two, three, go the Phillies. Four complete. Now in Philadelphia, the final game of this three game series. It's a look back at 70s, 80s, 90s retro night here at the ballpark. Are we there yet? The hilarious comedy based on the hugely successful movie franchise featuring Terry Crews and Ice Cube. Are we there yet? Comes to PHL 17 weeknights at 5.30 and premieres September 17th. Adam LaRoche leads it off here in the fifth. Single his first time up. Takes a strike. It's 0-1. LaRoche, Tyler Moore, Jesus Flores. Scoreless game. Two teams have combined for three hits. A Sunday afternoon pitcher's duel. Yeah. Well, that lead just comes right at you no matter what. And still a great competitor. You know, that's how you really test a lot of character with your players. Not so much when things are going good. When things are going bad, you know, how you're making the adjustment. Know how you're acting toward your teammates. Period. Got to be able to give that 100% every time that you're called upon to, to try and keep your uh, your team in the in the game. Foul ball down the left field line. It remains one at two. I think uh, some of the players after yesterday's ball game, Murph talked to Chase Utley about this series. Doc even said. Uh, after his outing last night, how it was important to play well, not only the rest of the year, but in particular against the team that's considered by many as to be the best team in the National League, to kind of send a message that, you know, the Phillies aren't going away yeah. that quietly. Yeah. That whether it be for this year or next year or beyond, you know, they're, they're trying to keep themselves, uh, you know, in the conversation. There's a called strike for four, four strikeouts for Lee. That's a little paint. And one out for Tyler Moore. Let's check in with Greg Murphy with his Major League Notebook. Murph. All right, T Mac, brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy College. And the Dodgers have had a big week, and they get more good news today. As 84 year old Vin Scully says, he's coming back for another season. The legendary play by play guy will be back uh, calling the Dodgers games next year. He's called 12 All Star games, guys, and 25 World Series. How about that? That's incredible. It is incredible. And speaking of history, as this one goes down the line, be good for two. Speaking of history, guys, the year was 1939. The place was Ebbets Field, and the two teams were the Cincinnati Reds 
and the Brooklyn Dodgers. And it was the site and scene of the first televised baseball game in Major League history. In 1939, the World's Fair was going on in New York City. They needed a showcase event to put on television. They decided that Major League Baseball would be that event. And, well, here we are today, guys. So I guess we should all say thank you to the folks back then. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that. it was a one or two camera shoot at the time. Red right. Barber, Murph. Red Barber was the uh, announcer. Red Barber was the announcer that did the game all by himself. And there were only two cameras. There was only two cameras. One that was like a high uh, home plate kind of camera and then one down the, the uh, left field line to to look for balls at first base so it just two cameras and obviously very primitive but back then it was an amazing thing to see and uh, obviously it's caught on and uh, Major League Baseball is the better for it well and you mentioned Red Barber Vin Scully who is coming back with the Dodgers Murph just said he broadcast yeah. with Red Barber. Oh, boy. That's how long he's been around. <laughs> it yeah. is remarkable. Yeah, I, I didn't mention, Vince Scully's been doing it for the Dodgers for 63 years in the booth for the Dodgers. That is unbelievable. He obviously started in Brooklyn and headed it out with the team down in Los Angeles. So, I mean, I know we all respect what he does. He is an absolute legend in the business. All right. Well, the count is no balls at one strike to Jesus Flores with a runner at second. Well, we've expanded from two to, well, Seven man cameras for our telecast. Oh, it to the count. Plus, right. we have the one up here in the booth. Right, right. It's That's not manned. It's the one that Wills likes. Yep. And of course, we have Greg Farnese in left field. He's he's manning that one out there. Showing his pipes off next to those two guys leaning against the. Yeah, he likes doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him with a cutter. An upstairs cutter. Two outs, five strikeouts for Lee. I don't know what it is, though. He's winding up. Hitters are only hitting 228. Take a look at this pitch. It goes out of the zone, but for whatever reason, the hitters seem to have a little bit better look at Cliff Lee at the clip of a 333 mark. You know, that's the disparity, and that's what maybe the reason he hasn't been able to win games. Well, besides not having a lot of run support, so it just hasn't been just Lee all by himself. Yeah, he's blown some games, but hasn't had a whole lot of support this year in the, in the run production. Today is a case in point. His offense has managed just one hit against Zimmerman. Lombardozzi with a second curveball trickles it over to second base and Utley throws him out by a hair. And the side is retired. So the one out double, no big deal. We play four and a half onto the bottom of the fifth. Cameras and all. Phil's looking for some offense. will start a three game series Tuesday the 11th is a I think it's the final Hatfield dollar dog night of the season plus Wednesday the 12th is a 405 start it's the Citizens Bank pride of the Phillies poster it's free to all fans. Oh. Oh, 
second half of the fifth inning. And the Phils have managed just one hit against Jordan Zimmerman. He's walked a couple. People always ask what, you know, what do you prefer, a pitcher's duel or a game with offense? And I always say, well, the Phillies are playing. As long as there's enough offense to give them the lead, I'm okay with a pitcher's duel. Now, I'm, I'm into the offense. I like to see good hitters hit. Obviously, I want to be able to win the game. I've liked the last couple of games the way that they have they've transpired. The fact the Phillies were able to add a run in the eighth inning the last two nights. Some clutch hitting. Good bullpen work. One and one the count to Franzen. And a liner to left field to base it. Seventh hit of this homestand for Franz. I'm going to tell you, he's got a nice little idea of what he's trying to do at that plate. That was an adjustment there, getting jammed his first time up there. And then being able to turn on this fastball, hitting it into left field. Kratz popped out his first time up. Won the count. He was jumping at that curveball. It just never came back on the inside part of the plate. One and one the count now to Eric Kratz. I think Charlie likes hitting him in that eighth position. It gives you that long ball threat. I've been asked by people why he's not batting higher in the lineup, particularly at this juncture. You think that's what it is, the long ball threat? Maybe well, lack of speed too. Lack of speed, and then when you start to look at the uh, the way that he put together the lineup, I mean, don't know where else he would actually be able to hit. Uh, you know, maybe seventh instead of eighth there with Franson, but you like the idea of Franson being able to get on and cracks hit behind them. You're not going to hit him fourth or fifth, although I mean he could sneak in there fifth there where Mayberry is. But Mayberry's been doing a pretty good job as of late and showing that signs of of hitting the ball consistently. Two and two, the count to Kratz with Franz at first. Inside, off the glove of Flores, Phillies will get a runner in scoring position. That's a pass ball charged to Flores. Now this will just hit some right on the glove. Then get the glove up. Well, for it to be a wild pitch, it would have to hit the dirt. But that hit all glove, and you just kind of botch that one. Get it on the same page on the signs. I don't think he crossed them up on that particular pitch. When we talk about Roy Halladay during his time with the Phillies, how good he's been with runners in scoring position. Zimmerman's been the same for the Nationals. 152. Franzen takes his lead off second. Espinosa's going to keep him close. Now, even though it's no outs, this is not one of those situations where you want Kratz to give up his swing. You, know, you still want him to be aggressive and hitting in that, that eighth spot. Branson, he can get over on a on a long fly ball. It's just as effective as a ground ball to the right side. Lee waits on deck.
broke his bat. Franzen goes halfway, diving as Harper, and he makes the catch. And Franzen realized there was a chance, so he started going back. One out here in the fifth inning. Well, he just read that ball very well and being able to get back. If he had booted it, the worst thing would have been he would have been at third base. So that's good base running, great technique. You know, he gets off just about halfway. Kratz gets actually jammed on that. He comes in, dives, catches it, and catches that ball cleanly right in Harper's glove there. Take another look at it as he comes in. I tell you, you just don't see a lot of shoestrings anymore where guys just keep on going. Everybody goes into the dive. Well, with one out, Lee is up with the runner at second, and he takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. That was a slider. Lee struck out looking his first time to the plate. Franzen leads off second. Bryce Harper plays pretty shallow center field. Other than that, wouldn't have been able to catch the ball. He's played a lot of center field, too. Lee smokes it straight away center. Harper's on the run. It's over his head, and it's a one hop off the base of the wall. Franzen will coast home from second, and Cliff Lee has an RBI double, and the Phillies are on the board. Well, there's your other side of the coin where when you're playing that shallow, you're not able to get balls normally. You would get if you're playing back a little bit deeper. Give Cliff Lee some credit hitting against that front foot as he drives that ball almost straight away center field. No chance for Harper. Francis comes in your pitcher there. Two out base hit. He's safe at second. He sure is secure as you could be with an RBI double. And now Jimmy Rollins is coming up. Then yeah, we talked about character too when it comes to Cliff Lee. I mean, every time he is at the plate, you bet he's trying to do the best that he can. And that means driving and hitting the balls. And, you know, has a pretty good idea about what he's trying to do at the plate. I mean, he really got a hold of that ball, hit the center field there that Bryce Harper couldn't get. Rollins 0 for 2. Takes outside. One ball and no strikes. Sometimes as a pitcher, you got to take things in your own matter. Win your own ball game. Some can. He can. <laughs> Don't forget about him either at second base. He wouldn't go here with Rollins up. But don't forget the last time the Phillies faced the Nationals, they forgot about him at first, and he just took off the second. I said to Sam Perlazzo after that, I said, hey, did you tell him to go? He said, well, no, I told him the time, and he just went. <laughs> okay, Greg Maddox used to do that all the time when he was in Chicago. But I got to tell you, those two uh, pitchers advantage. If he can still a base or two during the course of the season, and Getting in scoring position. Three and zero. The count to Rollins, and he takes. Juan Pierre is on deck. In the air to right field. Back it up by it is worth. Warning track. Wall it is. Gone! Two run home run for J Roll. And the Phillies now hit it three to nothing. Step right now. Well, he knew that was gone right away. Take a look at it. 
again, and that's what happens a lot of times when the pitcher concentration is split. He'll throw a bad pitch right down the middle as Jay will make some pay for it. Ed Beatty of Philadelphia, you've just won 100 hours. Compliments to the McDonald's home run jackpot, and they may have rattled Zuba just a little bit here in the fifth inning. Well, I know he's upset with that pitch. He's probably upset about the pitch to Lee, too. Well, I tell you, when he hits those balls, I mean, it's just like any other classic, maybe home run hitter. It's just classic technique. His problem is he's just not making enough solid contact, but when he does, and he shows you what he can do. That's why he's one of the best shortstop in the league and more offensively than than defensively. 75 runs scored 50 RBIs for Rollins and for that home run and for each one hit by the Phils this year one tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society as part of home runs for trees. It's a partnership between the Phillies PHS and Aramark home runs for trees as part of plant one million. A project to restore the region's tree coverage. For information, visit phillies.com slash red goes green. Boy, you see that ball? That's exactly where he wants to swing at him. And I've said that before. He hits the ball better when it's down in the zone. All he has to do is just drop the head on the bat on the ball there, and it gets right out of the ballpark. 2 0 the count to Pierre, who's walked and he's grounded out. Yeah, that's a, a higher fastball, kind of borderline, and that's the difficult pitch to get on top of. Try and keep it fair or hit it solid. Back toward the middle, and that breaks it 0 for 16 slump for Juan Pierre. Maybe Johnson's watched his starters these first two games. Now the third game pitched pretty well. But the Phils have gotten the bigger hits compared to the Nationals in this series. Chase Utley is 0 for 1 with a walk. Well, the good side is, is that the guys are making solid contact. Pierre did not try to steal the last time he was on base. I know he's trying to keep that hole open on the right side. But the numbers dictate that you can run against this uh, Nationals team. Yeah, I don't think really these guys think about it too much these days about trying to keep a particular side open. You know, it's just not a lot of guys. I mean, they're guys that are pull hitters that. They play there no matter what, whether or not they're men on or not. Borzolani started to throw in the bullpen for the Nationals with one out here in the fifth. Three nothing Phillies. The air off first. Two and oh. Seven, uh, I'm sorry, seven three ball counts. We start getting few highs on base. Just about every pitcher pitches a little differently. And no pitcher likes to give up a hit to another pitcher, and especially if you're talking about driving in a run and, and the first run.
There goes Pierre. That ball is hit well. Straight away center field. Harper on the run. He's got a beat on it. And he makes the catch. Two God here in the fifth. Uh, struck out and flat out to left. Throws him a slider, 0 1 the count. He still has a pretty good slider going, even with all the pitches that he's thrown in this inning. Well, he has an excellent slider, a sinker. Been getting the ball a little bit more over the plate. Guys have taken advantage of it and driving the ball. Favorable count. It's two and one. Yeah, he's throwing them all breaking balls, trying to really make sure he keeps that ball down and in. See if he goes away. I don't know if Juan Pierre wants to try and steal. Usually you let your big guy hit at least up to two strikes. It's a 30 pitch inning right now for Zoom. Pitch counts up to 90. This will be number 91 for the day. Pierre goes. Got a really good jump. And there it is. Stolen base number 586. That moves him into a tie with Maury Wills for 19th place all time. That's just a heck of a feat. But take a look. He's been reading him the whole time. As soon as he almost. Gets ready to pick up that leg. He goes and, and slides in the second. You know as a base stealer that that back heel has to come up before you throw the first. And he just read him like a buck. Howard works out a walk. First and second now for John Mayberry. And they won't bring in the lefty here. Yeah. You know, and the left handers too were starting to have better swings. So he wasn't going to give in to Ryan Howard. Especially. Having a right here, as you mentioned, coming up, it may be. John Mayberry is single, and he's also grounded out. Mayberry takes a strike. It's all one. Think about that, Sarge. To tie Maury Wills um, just, in a category where Maury Wills was one of the best in the game's history. Dominated. Dominated the running game then. As Juan says anytime you talk to him about those things, he said he's blown away. Blown away that he's in that conversation. Mayberry hits it to shallow right field. Espinosa, excuse me, Lombardozzi, the second baseman, makes the catch. So that's a 34 pitch hitting for Jordan Zimmerman. Cliff Lee drives the first run home with a double over the head of Bryce Harper. Then Jimmy Rollins brings home Lee with a two run shot to right. Phillies lead it 3 0 as we go to the sixth here at Philly.
is doing everything he can to show he deserves to be in the majors. Kevin Franzen has battled for the last six seasons to stay at the major league level. Now with his third team in the last three years, he has stepped in and stepped up. The 30-year-old has been consistent at the plate, and he has thrown his body all over the field. His current stay has been successful and bruising, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Changing the game. Well, the Philly fans have certainly enjoyed watching Kevin Franza during the course of his time uh, here in Philadelphia. Today, he scored the game's first run. Phillies lead it 3-0 as we start the sixth. Roger Bernardino will pinch hit for Jordan Zimmerman, who's done after five. Very important inning, shutdown inning, you're looking for. And this is what I'm talking about when you're taking your own ball game in, in, in your hands. Just being able to go right at him. Bernadita bunts to the right side. Lee off the mound. Nobody's covered first. It will be a base hit. I don't know if they would have gotten him anyway. But Ryan Howard came off the bag thinking that he might have a play. But it's going to be a bunt single for Bernadita. Yeah, the only chance maybe they would have had was for Cliff Lee to be able to flip it to Ryan Howard if he was going to be at first. Other than that, this is just really a perfect bunt there. You can see nobody just in no man's land. And even if he's there, it would have been very difficult to get him. So Bernadina, who has stolen a base in this series, takes his lead off first. Danny Espinosa, the shortstop, will be the batter. He's 0 for 2. Bernadita close over at first. So what about this job that Davey Johnson's done with this team, Sarge? Well, I mean, we'll have to talk about it a little later there when you start talking about managers of the year. Davey Johnson will definitely get some some votes. Clint Hurdle, oh. the Pittsburgh Pirates. Your guy, Johnny B. Johnny Jesse B. Baker. Baker will get some votes. I guess it's not a surprise. Davey Johnson has been successful. Uh, every place he's managed. Oh, this guy, he's been, he's one of those guys, a, a player's manager as well. And he came over from Baltimore to the Atlanta Braves in 1973. Daryl Evans, Hank Aaron, and yes, David Johnson, the first trio to hit, what, 40 home runs. You imagine that. Three guys on your team, 40 home runs, and Look what he's done with his managerial career. Yeah, including a world championship in 86 with the Mets. The 0 2 pitch to Espinosa. High, one ball, two strikes. You know, a lot of his younger players, when you tell them that he had 40 and they look at Davey, they say, no way. No way he could possibly have hit 43 home runs in 1973. Well, he played with the Phillies in 77 and 78 after his three years with Atlanta. He didn't play a lot with the Phillies. He played 78 games in 77, 44 games in 78. Fly ball, shallow center, playable for Mayberry. What a way. Baltimore must have thought they made a mistake because the year before he only hit five home runs with the Baltimore Orioles and then traded over to the Atlanta Braves. He hits 43. He was part of some pretty good Baltimore teams. His high water mark at home runs was 18 back at 71. Well, you're right. 72, he hit, he, he hit five at 32 <laughs> RBIs, and then you put him in a different lineup, and he hit 43 and had 99 RBIs. That's unbelievable. Just when everything clicked, put everything together that particular year, and what a terrific year he had. Harper fouls it away. It's 0 and 1. Boy, what a grab by a fan. One hand again. Well, I mean, he catches that. <laughs> oh, now. Now. <laughs> He'll let you know exactly how that felt. Still a very good catch. <laughs> it was. Here's the 0 1 to Harper. 
A little low. One ball, one strike. It's kind of like when you're a hitter and you get hit with a particular pitch. You know, they'll always tell you don't rub it. I've always felt if it hurts, you gotta rub it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, here's the catch by that young fan. Break it down, Sarge. Take a look. I mean, he's just one handed, like he's just nobody's business. See, the other guy had two hands, and he's just like it's just no big deal. His friends are looking at him like, wow. Look how cool the two of them look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just automatic. You can tell those guys have played some baseball. Harper fouls it away. It's going to be pretty difficult to come up with a fans catch of the year this year. That's a whole bunch of different candidates. If you take a look at Roy Holiday there. Cliff Lee 142 strikes combined just 33 balls. Hey, too, what a great pitch though. Just took something off of it and. Bryce Harper at a young age. You can just tell how good he's going to be. Yeah, average doesn't tell right now though. I mean he's only hitting 249 but. Well, he's going to get smarter. He's going to get stronger. Curve ball tapped. Utley has a play at first. Two outs. Bryce Harper fell at the end. There was a little commotion going on at the first base bag just as he hit it, the ball arrived. Well, he's looking at the play, and that's one of the things that he shouldn't do, and he just well, he just slipped. More embarrassed than anything else. Now Lee with two outs as a runner at second. Zimmerman is singled. He's also tapped one right back to the box. Ball into there, one ball, no strikes. Well, outfield is pretty deep. Actually, Mayberry's come in a little bit, but any ball that goes out in the outfield, be pretty hard to get Bernardino, who's at second base. Seventy five pitches so far for Cliff. Look at the breakdown on the balls and the strikes. Boy. He's utilized the black a little bit. Well, that's what happens. I mean, he's just not hitting the, the middle of the plate. And really no pitcher. I mean, no matter how hard you throw, can can get away with throwing the ball down the middle of the plate. You can be Chatman or Rinky, any of the pitchers around. You just can't get away with it. You start moving the ball and you put them on the corners. That's a different story. Here's the two one pitch to Zimmerman. Oh, that's a good pitch. Every time the Phillies retire, the Nationals one two three Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports, giving you all your favorite sports all year long. Zimmerman had seven three ball counts at five innings. Lee is working with his uh, second three ball count. Fly ball left center field. That's pretty well hit. Pierre out into the alleyway has uh, it lined up, puts it away right on the track. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit. One man left in scoring position. 
although the Nationals are slipping a little bit in this series against the Phils. And the Phils lead it as we go to the bottom of the sixth. So you buy Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota Care. Buy McDonald's. Now a McDonald's any size soft drink or sweet tea is one dollar. And buy Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. Roger Bernadita stays at the ball gate to play center field. And the new pitcher is left-hander Todd Gorzolani. He'll take over for Jordan Zimmerman. And Gorzolani will face Nick's friends and Kratz. Of course, Lottie three and two with a 3.20 earned run average, 49 strikeouts in 59 innings of work. So far this year against the uh, the Phillies, he's had some success out on the hill. In fact, Corzellani uh, has appeared in four games. This is his fifth. He's allowed one run in six of the third. Yeah, I don't know what happened to this guy. He was a promising pitcher when he was with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's going to be one of those lefties that you'd have some problems with, but now he's put in the bullpen. Yeah, I, I kind of liken him to Paul Mahal, who's pitching for the Braves now. Okay. Both guys who pitched for the Pirates. Maybe a little Zach Duke. Yeah. Knicks take strike one. It's 0 and 1. Was talking before about how Nix was describing his slide uh, at the plate the other night, where he gave the Phils a second run. How everybody is, was lined up, telling him which way to go. Uh, and he said, in all seriousness, he said that slide was made because of my secondary lead. He said it's so important to get that real good walking lead off second. Uh, you know, and he brought it up. I was just more talking about yeah. the slide than anything else. That's a bullet deep to right field worth looking up and that one is gone. Man did that get out of here in a hurry. The third home run of the year for Lance Nix and the Phillies leading forward and nothing. Well doesn't have to worry about a secondary lead right now as he drives the ball out of the ballpark. This is what he can bring to your ball club if he's able to stay healthy himself. He's a guy that can come off your bench. Playing every now and then, you can get some power from him. That's a pretty good idea at the plate. What he wants to do, and this is off of a lefty. That ball up at the zone. Look at the eyes down, and the ball just kept rising and rising. Gets out by plenty. Second home run of the day for the Phillies. Franzen is up now. Franzen checked his swing. No appeal. No swing. Says Jerry Davis. Pretty quick hands by Lance Nix to get through the zone on that one. First home run since the 3rd of May. Yeah. 
Back toward the middle, and Franzen has another base hit. He's two for three. Eight for 17 on this homestead. Wow. All right, Sarge, it's time now for the Coors Light Freeze Cat. A lot going on around the ballpark today. The youngster getting a chance to meet the Fanatic. Obviously, the Fanatic meeting some of uh, his favorite folks out in left field. A look back at Sarge's early days. Backpack presented by ShopRite, the Jimmy Rollins uh, cooler. And the Fanatic uh, doing a little balancing act on the top of somebody's head. The starting nine getting a chance to go out to the, the field today. Of course, like Freeze Camp brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Kratz hits a foul. And out of play, 0 and 1. And another catch in the stand. I'm telling you, we really start winning. The fans start catching the balls in the stand. <laughs> All goes hand in hand. Huh? Hand in hand. Some youngsters getting into the mix today. Well, that's why you bring that glove with you to the ball game, especially when you're on the first base and left field side, sitting low. Go look at that right there, and he just picks it. Boy, he's got the adults dancing around him. Like, how would you do that? Scared the heck out of the guy who was trying to catch it ahead of him. Now, a splash of water for his efforts. Two and one, the count to Kratz. Number back to the mound. That could be two. There's one. One six three on the double play, and with a run across, two outs. Cliff Lee coming to the plate. He puts together one of these all-around games. The fans love it. Now he's a good athlete, you know. The record doesn't indicate that. Look at his average, though. I mean, he's. Over 200. Driven in three runs. Doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm going to tell you, hitting over 200 for pitchers considered good. Roger Bernardino, look where he is. He, you know, Lee, this is a lefty, so maybe it's a little different, but uh, the last one went to the right of the 401 side. Yeah, he's actually taking some steps back. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. And Flores will throw to first. Lee is struck out, and the side is retired. Well, Sarge, you'll leave on the heels of a home run by Lance Nix. You got some runs for us here in the middle innings. We go to the seventh, fills up 4 0.
talk about getting set up. Well, here is the game summary. Boy, what a good game this has been, especially for the Phillies. Jordan Zimmerman and, and Cliff Lee, they were matching zeros there for a while, and the Phillies exploded that three spot in the fifth. One of the big hits, of course, was that double by Lee to center field. And a couple of home runs, Jimmy Rollins, Lance Nix with homers. Lee has been tremendous here this afternoon, the same way he's been in so many games. We've talked about <laughs> maybe dominating a game. I didn't really text you before. You know, <laughs> he gets set up so easily around here. I should know better. <laughs> well, the phone was ringing, though. It was. We go to the top of the seventh. The Phillies lead it four nothing. <sighs> Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche, Tyler Moore, and the first pitch is outside. You know, there, the, there's going to come a time when you do a chicken little on me too many times now. The <laughs> sky is falling, and I'm not going to be there to answer your beck and call. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> huh. Earlier today, we were trying to get that that piece done, and. Jeff Halleck, but our producer was calling Wheels, but he wasn't answering the phone. So I said to Wheels, I said, did you get my text message? And he looked at the phone and Jeff ha happened to be called. Uh, One and two to count to worth. Yeah, I got yeah, Jeff. I got your email. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Tied to that phone. It just sits here for a long periods of time. To a two to Worth. Phillies have handled Jason Worth in this series. That's an <laughs> understatement. He's one for ten with six strikeouts. Yeah, he's due to hurt somebody, but they do know how to pitch him. They should. Two two. Just missed inside. Three and two. And they, you know he kills you down. He, he he doesn't like to be crowded, and with two strikes on him, he will swing at high pitches. So they've been working him really well. It's one thing though to execute your game plan when you have one because you miss with him down especially he'll really hurt you. That was a change up Lee off the mound has it fires low and it goes right on by Ryan Howard. Lance Nix will take it off the wall. And Worth will be safe at second. It'll be a base hit and an error Cliff Lee. Thing never came up when Lee went over there to get it. It just stayed right on the ground, so he really couldn't get set to throw, and then made a poor throw. Made a terrific pitch there on Jason, get him to dribble it out in front of the plate. Right here, now watch when it hits. It hits, then it just stays there. He does a really good job. They teach pitchers a lot of time when they field a ball like that. Put your hand on top of it, smother it like that. And then pick it up and throw, and then that way, you know, you won't get caught up with the spin of it. But that one he just threw away. The Roach is one for two. He singled to left. He struck out looking in the fifth. And what he has to do here now, if he gives up a run, he gives up a run. But just don't get into one of these innings that's happened to him this year where it snowballs on him. Fly ball deep to right field. Nick's going back to the warning track to the wall. It is gone. A two run home run for Adam LaRoche. No, they're going to say it's in play. Utley fires to the plate. LaRoche is caught between second and third. That ball looked like it was gone. Kratz throws to second. Worth is just hanging off the third base bag. They'll tag LaRoche. And they're going to have to review that, I would yeah. think. That's worth back too, so he did the right thing. He just went back. But you would think they would have to review that. Well, our initial replay uh, over the control room says that it was not a home run. We'll wow. take a look at it. Davey Johnson is going to come out and discuss it. Take a look, Wheels. It may be tough to tell from that vantage point, but take a look. It is off the top of the yep. fence. It wow. is. It is. What a great replay. So this will be a great shot. This will really show it right here. Off the top of the fence. That was the right call by Jerry Davis, the crew chief. The Phillies get a break on so many levels. Right off the top, and it comes back. You can see the bar, the bar right here on the thing shook on the fence. When they go see that, they're going to see they got it right. 
Well, 9 4 2 6 on the put out. Yeah. The umpires will go take a look at it. Lance Barksdale, the home plate umpire, stays. Watch the bar. The ball hits the bar right here. There. And look how the bar bends. Bends. Yep. That is not a home run. Unbelievable. That sure did look like one. It really did. It looked like it hit the stairs behind it and came back, yeah. which it has done before. Boy, what a break that would be for Cliff Lee, too. Yeah, the ground rule is it's got to go over the short fence, the small fence on top of the scoreboard. And that one hit right off the top of it. No, nope, they're going to signal no home run, and he's out at third. Good job by the umpires. Jerry Davis saw it originally. I thought he was wrong initially. Yeah. I really did. I thought it went over the fence and came back. Now LaRoche all of a sudden realizes what has happened here. See, that is worth bag because he's there originally. He has to make sure he stands on there. Jimmy does a great job of tagging both of them, too. One little thing that happened at the mm -hmm. end is a smart play. You tag them both. Because if Worth would have stepped off there, they're both out. And we've seen that before sure. in baseball where that's happened. That's a smart play on Jimmy's part there. Well, what a way. Tyler Moore is the hitter. He doubled his last time up. Well, that instant replay. How about that, huh? Swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. So he gets a double. He gets a double. Yeah. Yep. And nothing else. Just a double. And then nine, whatever it was. Did you write it down? Uh, nine, four, two, six Thanks. is what I have. Swing and a miss. I do believe that it was Nix that took it off the wall. It was. No, it may have been Mayberry that threw it in. So it was it may eight. have been eight, four, two, six. Okay. Eight, four, two, six. Good alert play by the outfield there, too, to get that thing back in. The 0 2 pitch. Foul ball. Well, I got to give credit to Jerry Davis, the, the first base umpire, yep. the crew chief. Who was down the right field line? He was the one who originally called it. Mm -hmm. From our vantage point, it looked like it may have hit beyond the fence and came back over, which we've seen before. And he called it confidently. He called it in play. Yeah, he saw it all the way. Down the left field line, Worth will score. And Tyler Moore is going to have his second extra base hit of the day. So it's going to be a 4 1 game on the RBI double. See, the point I was trying to make is. This has happened to Cliff Lee this year where th something will start up and he can't stop it. And it almost turned into a two run home run and then a double and Rich Doobie knowing that is going to get somebody up right away. He gets into the stretch and then all of a sudden something goes wrong. Jesus Flores is 0 for 2. Sent it to a double play. He struck out. One ball, no strikes. Phillies have a left-hander warming up right now in the bullpen. It's like Jeremy Horst is starting to throw. Lindblom's going to throw too, the right-hander. Well, Washington didn't win all these games this year by not coming back at people either. So you almost thought they were going to make at least one run here. Now ball one and one. Oh, the last outing for Cliff, he was six innings scoreless. Got helped out in the six by a double play at the end and a unbelievable play by Kevin Franzen over at third. Then he allowed three runs in the seventh inning. And yeah, that's when it fell apart. And that's what's happened to him a bunch of times this year. For whatever reason, he can't stop it. One and one the count. Now they have the pitcher batting second in the order right now. So as they get down here towards the bottom, you have to remember Bernadina, left handed hitters in the nine hole. So those two guys warm up. All started with that little dribbler that Jason Worth hit on a 3 2 pitch in this inning. To right field. 
Flores on the I mean, excuse me Nick's on the run makes the catch more tags from second and he'll go to third two outs. Well, these lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They were each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Is on third. Lombardozzi's 0 for 2. Outside, one ball and no strikes. And Cliff has two more batter. At least two more, maybe even another. Well, it depends. Espinosa at the top of the order has 11 home runs left handed and three right handed. And hopefully, he just gets this guy out and that's the end of it. Conversation with Cliff Lee. Ninety-four pitches. Kind of fooled on that swing. It's one and one. So it was late. Oh. Just need to get one more strike here. One more out here at the bottom of the, or top of the seventh. Excuse me. Remember, those are a little fried on that pitch. You didn't think that was a strike. One and two the count of the pitch. He fouls it away. Well, a sold out crowd. More than 44,000 on hand today at the start. Getting behind Cliff Lee. The one two pitch. Curve ball rolled. Foul up the third baseline. Great pitch at throw there. And hasn't shown him one of them since probably the first at bat when he struck him out. Really fooled him and he just got a piece of it. Fastball looped out to second, caught out of the air by Utley, and the side is retired. One run scores. For the Washington Nationals, it was almost two. Look how close Adam LaRoche was from getting a home run. Instead, it hits the top of the fence. It comes back in. John Mayberry then brings it in. The umpires were asked to check it. They did. They said no home run, and it was announced.
that Bryce Harper played baseball when the Nationals selected him number one overall in the 2010 draft. I don't know. Do you want to call him down to the clubhouse and ask him if he knows? I think the last person he'd want to hear from is our booth right now to ask him about that. I think so. Although he is a nice guy. Seems like he's that. a very nice fellow. Well, there he is anyway. He's on the bench. If you, watch, if you read the uh, Sports Illustrated article right before his draft, not the one where he was on the cover. That was when he was in high school. Mm -hmm. You would know that the College of Southern Nevada Coyotes was the home of Bryce Harper. Right. You wouldn't know that. Yeah. But I did. I didn't either. No. I knew it was Nevada. I didn't know what. Yeah, well, that's where he's from. We figured he... I knew it was somewhere in Nevada, but I didn't know where it was. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge. Stuff the fans. Oh, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Phillies leading it four to one. And they will send to the plate the top of the order. Jimmy Rollins. Juan Pierre, Chase Utley. Rollins now with 15 home runs, wheels. He leads the uh Phillies in home runs now with those 15. This is Hunter Pence was off to San Francisco. A hey, second one in shortstop behind Ian Desmond. In the National League, third overall, J.J. Hardy uh, and Ian Desmond both have more. Not too shabby. So he's up right handed here. No, he caught, looked like Ryan Zimmerman got a little bit out of whack after that double to center by Lee and got in, got in trouble and he got a pitch there that Jimmy could handle. He hit it out and made it three to nothing. Harper made an unbelievable play to save a run right before that. And the diving stab by uh, off the bat of Eric Kratz. Oh, and one of the count to Rollins. Rollins' home run ball was caught out in right field by uh, Colin Hamilton. He was the one who was diving over the seats there. How do you know that? Well, his father is the head football coach at the College of New Jersey. No he, kidding. He told me that his son was the one who got the ball. That's great. <laughs> Kids an athlete. It's in the genes. Dad's been the football coach at the College of New Jersey since uh, the 70s. Wow. He was an All-American there, All-American center. At that time, it was called what? Wills? Trenton State College. That was when you went there. Well, even then. But yeah. What and two, the counter Rollins. And he's going to be aboard with another base hit. So Jimmy has a two hit day. Two for four, a home run, two RBIs. That's a good day. Yeah. On speed pitch of some kind, he did a nice job of staying back and hitting that line drive. Let me bunt him over here. Well, you're left left after that. With uh, Utley and Howard, still might try it with Juan Pierre. You never know; he could bunt it well enough. He could beat it out. Pierre's what for two. He ended an 0 for 16 slump his last time up. He does bunt right back toward the box, and it's successful. Sacrifice one three. Want to add to your Phillies game experience? Well, pregame party areas for groups of 20 or more are perfect for entertaining family, friends, or business associates. A variety of party areas to choose from. For more information, call 215 463 5000 and ask about pregame parties at Citizens Bank Park or check out Phillies.com. There's the Bud Light, Bud Light rooftop. I guess it's called the Budweiser rooftop this year. They kind of switch it around from time to time. All from the same company. <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri. At least 0 for 2 with a walk today. Fouls it back. It's 0 and 1. Storin is warming up in the Nationals pen. And Jeremy Horst is up in the Phillies pen. There's Storin. And then down below is Horst. If the Phillies were to make a change too with Lee. They do have left-handed hitter coming up. And then they have Espinosa, who mentioned you'd rather him hit right-handed, probably. And then they're have Gorzolani, the pitcher hitting after that, and their best pinch hitter off the bench is left-handed and Tracy. 
So a left hander in the game probably is the way they're going to go and they have one up in the bullpen. Utley grounds it to the right side. Three one on the put out over to third goes Rollins. And they'll leave the inning up to Ryan Howard. Howard's 0 for 2 today with a walk. Two for 12 off Gorzolani lifetime. Try to check the appeal. Yes. Mm. This is Manny Gonzalez. Where else did he go? <laughs> well, you can see why he called it. And it, it's so close. A lot of those you just can't tell. I, so hard for him to stop once he gets going. I think he stopped. Yeah. I, you know. Don't know him. There's intent involved. They have all kinds of ways they read them. I'd like to say he stopped too. He sure thought he did. One and two, the count to Howard. Two and two. Fastball upstairs. Good job of battling back, though. Now it's two two. They have that shift on right now, and they have to keep Zimmerman near Jimmy over there at third. Look at all that room right in here. He hits a ground ball that way. Only surprise they just don't leave the shortstop over a little bit more off a left hander who's pitching him away. Because they have plenty over there on the right side. If he hooks one, it's going to take the zip off it if the ball's away. And, and you have all that room on the left side. Take advantage of it. You can. Yeah, if you can. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to guide a baseball, especially when you have two strikes on them. Three and two now that count. Every, Flores keeps it in front of him. Every pitch is in the same spot. It's a way, away, away. That's why you have all that room over there on that side. And, but yet they're still playing with three to pull on the right side. Swing and a miss. The ball gets away. Flores will pick it up and throws out Howard. Strikeout and the putout go 2 3. Phillies leave one over at third. No runs, one hit, one man left. We go to the eighth inning. And the Phillies on top, 4 to 1.
up so you buy a Honda. Visit your Honda dealer right now for great deals. Only a Honda is a Honda. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of the Phillies. And buy Acura. Acura Advance. Four to one. Phillies on top as we move to the top of the eighth inning. Cliff Lee done after seven. No walks. Five strikeouts. He was terrific today. Once again, no walks. Now one walk in 40 innings. Started off by getting a strikeout on a hook. Here's a double play right here. A real good job by Chase Utley once he got to the bag. And Cliff Lee, very good fielder. Gets Bryce Harper and that little comebacker. And another strikeout there, Jason Worth, who finally got a hit on a little dribbler last time up. Michael Martinez, his first opportunity of the day, is diving attempt and it goes past him. So Roger Bernardino leads off the eighth inning with a double down the line. Martinez just brought in for Juan Pierre. Did everything he could to try to come up with this one. Bernardino, left handed hitter, hits a slicer down there towards the line. Can't quite get there. Well, he was recovered fast enough to keep Bernardino at second. Bernardino's a good player. I was talking about him last night. He, Really impressed by him. He just does a lot of good things. Runs deep counts, puts a ball in play, can run, throw. Good guy to have in a ball club. Well, here's Danny Espinosa, the leadoff hitter. He'll bat right handed against Force. He's been batting right handed all day against Lee. Ian Desmond, by the way, has come out of the on deck circle to pinch hit for the pitcher spot. When they have Zimmerman. You're going to get to Zimmerman and then Worth, maybe. So they're going to get right hander up in the bullpen. Gorzolani on deck. Uh, I mean, to um, as Tom just said, who they're going to hit for Gorzolani. So see what happens with the Phillies bullpen. Over to the left side. Rollins will have to hurry to get Espinosa, and he just gets it over in time. More importantly, Bernadita stays at second. Yeah, that's a wasted at bat and a good one for the Phillies. Well, here comes Ian Desmond. Lynn Bloom has been warming up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Charlie's off his chair. Well, here comes Charlie Manuel, and that's going to be it for Jeremy Horace. He'll bring in uh, Josh Lindblom with one out. And a runner at second base. So Lindblom had been warming up with Horst. So he's ready to go. This is an AT&T call to the bullpen here at Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies hanging on to a three-run lead here in the eighth. Mark is Friday September 21st to start a three game series. It's last weekend. They'll face them Sunday. The 23rd is the total Cole Hamels action figurine free defense 14 and under. That's a pretty cool giveaway.
Saturday the 22nd is German Heritage Night here at the ballpark. Last weekend of home games in 2012 here at Citizens Bank Park. Get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Josh Lindblom was on. He'll face a pinch hitter. It won't be Ian Desmond. Lindblom two and three with a 3.72 earned run average. And he will face instead of Ian Desmond, Chad Tracy. Well, they knew this could happen. Tracy can only make it four to three, and the tying run would be a right-handed hitter and Zimmerman then worth for him to follow. I think that's their thinking right now. Wilson Valdez, by the way, is up and warming in the pen for the Phillies. And he's up for LaRoche a little later on in this inning. Hopefully the Phillies don't get to that point. Bernadette is on second. Tracy's 0 for 2 so far in this series. It's at the opposite way. Rollins backhand sets himself, freezes Bernadina, two outs. Good play by Jimmy, totally under control because he knew he had a slow runner. Thing you talk about in baseball, before the ball's ever hit, what's going to happen to you? What do I do with it? Who's at home plate? Slow runner, all kinds of time. You know, if that guy wants to go to 30, he's not going to worry about him unless he, you know, goes at the last minute and you have him by. 50 feet. And Bernardina, he wasn't going to take any chances. That's good base running on his part. Now Ryan Zimmerman with uh, two outs. He's one for three. Back to back sliders and back to back strikes. So it's two. Charlie before the game thought that Papelbon would be able to go today uh, with the pitch number that he's thrown. But uh, they always, as he always says, well, I'm going to check with Rich Doobie and then we'll decide later if we need him. Rosenblum, uh, Rosenberg, excuse me, is the uh, near nearest to us. And Valdez the farthest. Oh, it's two, the count to Ryan Zimmerman. And the pitch from Lindblom. Swing and a miss. He got him with a fastball. 94 miles an hour, and Lindblom does the job. He gets the two batters he needs to here in the eighth inning. The Phillies leave one in scoring position. We've played seven and a half in Philadelphia. The bullpen steps up once again in relief of Cliff Lee today. And we go to the bottom of the eighth with the Bills on top by three. Down this afternoon's ball game. Analysis and reaction from the clubhouse. Marty Bystrom's here at the yard. It's all on the Phillies post game show live from Sugar House Casino coming up after the game on PHL 17.
of half of the eighth inning. And Drew Storen will be the new pitcher for the Washington Nationals. 44,653 on hand today. Another sellout. Storen 1 0 with a 4.15 earned run average. <laughs> They have the kiss cam going on on the video board here, and you know they show couples and they get together, and then they showed uh, Dave Dittinger down in the uh, dugout, and they played the music all by myself. Yes, and he is related to the great Ray Dittinger. Yeah. That's his son. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray Dittinger, Dave is actually a kid, but Ray Dittinger, what a journalist. Yep. Special. Bottom of the eighth inning, John Mayberry will lead it off against Drew Story. All right, so the Phillies on top four to one. The last couple of games, they've been able to get an extra run in the eighth inning. Let's see if they do the same here. Won't be as easy. They don't have Utley up. <laughs> Who will play the role of Chase up? <laughs> Maybe Kevin Franzen. How about the bullpen's empty? Bullpen is empty at this point. You know, they had Valdez and Rosenberg uh, throwing at the ends. Want to know the count to Mayberry? Mayberry hits a foul just to the right of us. Sounds like a broken record, but somebody just made a one-headed grab. That gentleman right there. Applebaum has been in three straight games. You know, they, they, they look at the night. You know, Charlie's looking at the numbers here. Here's this play right here. Good catch. And on the pitches and all that, and he said, well, I think we can use him, but I have to check. So maybe they can't. One and one the count to Mayberry. One and two. They'll check with the player. They'll check with the. They'll check with the pitching coach. All those things go into it when the guy's been used. And three days in a row, he looks like he may not be available. Papelbon, if he does commit, is going for his 30th save of the year. Yeah. Doesn't look like it though. He'd be up by yeah, now. He'd be up by now. Well, it's kind of a warm day. There he is. Put some gum in his mouth. Never know. Two balls, two strikes the count. Stephen LaRude was out of the, uh, the bullpen. He's the one to the right putting the catcher's equipment on. He is the Phillies' backup catcher at this point. Now he's taking it off. So he's not going to warm anybody up. Day tomorrow, and then the Phillies will welcome in the New York Mets for a three game series beginning Tuesday. The Phillies have played 26 out of the last 27 days, 17 straight here today. The only off day was on August 9th, and they're 15 and 10, trying to make it 16 and 10 in that stretch. Swing and a miss, and there's one away. 96 on that fastball from Storm. This guy's back. Of Nick's will bat with one out here in the eighth inning. We haven't seen Clifford in this series, which is a good thing. Yeah, and they have an off day tomorrow. They're going to stay in town, the Nationals, because of uh, Hurricane Isaac, which is a uh, barren down on the state of Florida. So I think it, I think the Nationals will stay here uh, for the next day and then head out to Florida. I think tomorrow night. Let the area clear out a little bit. That's a big storm. Oh. Big storm, yeah, headed out into the Gulf after it brushes the southern the Florida Keys and then the, the southern tip of Florida, it sounds like. We may get a piece of it when we go to Atlanta on Thursday. Nix has a home run today, one for three. Wax that change up foul, 0 and 2. Hit it off a left hander, too, which is nice. Talked about him earlier in the game that. 
you know he's a guy that fits into the puzzle for next year. Ground ball to second. Lombardozzi comes in. Four three on the put out. For the second out here, the eighth. Franzen's coming up. Well, it looks like the uh, ninth inning is going to belong to Lindblom to start. Yep. They may piece it together after that. Well, it goes right, left, right. They have no left handed hitter left on the bench. Do the Nationals. Franzit is two for three today. His average is up to 355. That may be going up to the upper deck. It is. Another good catch. This Tuesday, Chris Young will start for the Mets. Van Swarley will get the nod for the Phillies. He'll be on the air at 7 o'clock. On PHL 17. To the right side again. Lombardozzi will throw out Franzen. Phillies go down in order. Now all that's left for the Phillies is the top of the ninth inning. Try to go for the series sweep over the Washington Nationals. Those are the guys they'll have to deal with when we get back. Washington Nationals they lead it four to one and Josh Lindblom will begin the ninth inning on the mound for the Phillies and he will face Jason Worth that on the Roach and Tyler Moore so obviously Papabot is not available in the pen the Phillies have Valdez a left hander and BJ Rosenberg a right hander three straight days depending on the number of pitches he threw and four or five and four or five and with an off day tomorrow you know they're just not going to let him go today. Jason Worth is one for three today. He's popped out, struck out, and he has singled and scored. The only run for the Nationals. So the other guys have been doing a really good job lately. They need to pick up the slack again today for their closer. First pitch is over for a strike. Down the right field line out of play, and it's 0 at 2. Phillies bullpen has gotten 10 of a third, 10 and a third scoreless uh, recently on this homestand. I would to the count.
breaking ball swung on and missed play. He really slowed up that breaking pitch. That was a curve from Lindblom. And he's got two strikeouts, and the fans love saying goodbye to Jason Worth in that way. And they're going through a lot of stuff there. Pratt's and, and Lindblom, they finally got to a curveball. Seven strikeouts of this series for Worth. He really fooled him with two strikes way out in front. One out. LaRoche is the hitter. And he hits that one toward first, and it's caught over the air by Ryan Hour. Two outs. The Phillies sweeps this year. They've had one against the Brewers. It was a three game sweep. They've had two two game sweeps against the Cubs and the Astros. Lynn Bloom, there, guy giving a little broom thing there. Lynn Bloom trying to pick up the save. Forty four thousand six hundred fifty three. That's right. Bring them to their feet man. And Moore who's had a good day takes outside and low. It's one and oh. Tyler Moore is two is two for three with an RBI. Cliff Lee has not won here at Citizens Bank Park since September of last year. One and one the count. Charlie Manuel said Cliff Lee's year has been unreal. <laughs> Here's the 1 1 pitch to Moore. Breaking ball swung out and missed. It's 1 and 2. One more strike. Nice to see this again. It sure is. Two strikes. People up. Chance to win a game. And pick up a sweep. Sell out. This is fun today. 1 and 2 the count to Tyler Moore. Lindblom has his sides. He's in the line. And the pitch. Way outside. A little bit of an adrenaline rush, yeah. I would think. He was throwing the breaking ball there, the slower one, and just kind of held on to that one a little long. There's Cliff Real. I love that expression from Charlie when he says, it's just unreal. And that's what he's been using on, on Lee lately. It's unreal. It's been happening with him. And now the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. He got and for the first time since September 5th of last year, Cliff Lee has won a ball game here at Citizens Bank Park as the Phillies sweep out the Washington Nationals by a final score of 4 to 1. What a weekend of baseball here in Philadelphia. The Phillies are now within six games of the 500 mark for the first time since the 28th of June. And that run that started on July the 31st of all these games in a row, very few off days, just one. They wind up 16 and 10 in that long stretch of games. Nice shot. As we've said a few times during the course of this weekend series against the Nationals, it's like the old days here at Citizens Bank Park. Our